Eclectica. I am Michael Seven. Michael, we have also from the Eclectica team, we have Michael the Knight Bazooka. How you doing? Good, good. Here today with Stefan Pacorni. Yes, right? yeah, That's it's pretty good. Yes. Got it. Um, he's, you're, he's amazing with terrain building for the Dungeons and Dragons. Like, you're incredible with that. Um, how did you. And you're going to be at Fanfare this weekend. Yes, so, very uh, excited. Tell very us about excited. that. What, your, um, um, uh, my you? alma mater, Art and Design, high school. Oh, right. wow, so you went there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I graduated at the silver anniversary of the school. I think it was 1985. Uh, I, I grabbed the, the gold medal in painting. Yeah, I walked away with the gold medal that year. So how did you get involved with... Dungeons and Dragons and actually creating worlds. First of all, not many people can even say, hey, I create worlds <laughs> for a living. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a dream come true, you know? I mean, since I was like, I guess, 10 years old or 12 or somewhere around that time, I discovered Dungeons and Dragons and I played for a while. And then at, at summer camp, I learned. And then uh, came back to New York and like, oh my God, I found this, the complete strategist. A game store, found some books, Dungeons and Dragons Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and uh, I started creating my own world. And I played for like, I don't know, 25 years or so until I was like, well, it's great, but, but we're playing on graph paper. And you have such great miniatures, and I'm painting the miniatures, but we have to put them on graph paper. So that, that was lame. So I said, hey, I... I studied as an artist, and let's let's create actually three-dimensional terrain. So, I started making 3D terrain, and uh, I got a little 10-foot booth at Gen Con, and uh, opened up the the booth, and they sold out in four hours. So I knew that was in 1996. Wow! I knew I was onto something, and uh, what started out as just something to supplement my income as a starving artist became my job, mm -hmm. and now. Uh, 22 years later, it's we're known as the premier terrain maker in the world. Wow. That was in 96? That was your first one, first right? First Gen Con, 96. And then what, like, what inspired you behind that? What was your inspiration behind that specific design? Dungeons and Dragons! It was my inspiration. Like, where do you get the ideas from to build? Like, what is it, watching oh, like, action movies or what? Like... No, I was uh, not much of a TV watcher, but... Mm -hmm. um. Uh, my inspiration was that we had these little miniatures and uh, we couldn't buy anything that could make like the whole reality look real right we had to draw off a magic marker 10 foot thing right so I'm like well I'm a sculptor I'm trained in sculpture I'm trained in painting right so I said well uh, I started making out of cardboard started making cardboard walls you know and that was kind of cool and I I used technology I used a uh a photocopy machine that my dad had. I drew rocks on paper and I photocopied them lots of times and I cut them out and then I glued them on the cardboard so the cardboard would look like rocky walls. And uh, But the thing is the cardboard, you know, you get excited and it all flies all over the place, you know, it doesn't have any weight. So that was a bit of a drawback. Uh, and uh, so we went on to better material. I started sculpting them out of it harder at uh, what do you call it, plastiline and then casting them and uh, rubber molds and casting them and making real durable sort of things that have a weight to them and so now they're not flying around and that was the early beginnings of uh, the 3D dungeons started with dungeons then we went to caverns and uh, all kinds of other stuff castles now we have and uh and then we, we changed to better material Dwarvenite in, uh, I think that was around five years ago, five, six years ago, Dwarvenite, which is another material yet. 
It's like a PVC, almost rubbery kind of material. You can bounce it off the wall and you won't hurt the piece. You might hurt the wall, but you won't hurt the piece. And uh, everyone loves that because they can let their kids play with it. Mm -hmm. So now that, that kind of elevated us to better. I ran these Kickstarters and that's when I started to get, you know, the word really got out with the Kickstarters. Great publicity, you know. And so now we're, we're selling, you know, I don't know, three or four million dollars a year in terrain. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That is crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, castles, three, three, three wow. four million dollars. Wow. So how much is a set? So like, for instance, this one that I have up right now, how much is that set? Oh. Wow, that's uh, an older resin set. That's like lake, lake set. That's a bunch of sets put together. Uh, we used to sell them in the boxes were like probably like $109 at the time. That's probably, it all comes hand painted, ready to use. Wow. Uh, and um, even the water is like painted first and then poured like a, a transparent thing on top so that you, it looks like water. And these are now no longer in stock. We don't make them anymore, so they're collectible. What used to be a $119 box now sells for $1,500 on eBay. Wow. People have been buying them up on eBay for crazy amounts of money. Wow. But our new Kickstarter coming out, I guess, in April, we're going to have a new water system that's coming out. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Hold on, before I even go to the new stuff. Yeah. yeah. Just mentally. Yeah. To create something and sell it for like a hundred bucks. Yeah. And now someone's like fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred dollars for the same thing. It's a collectible now. How does that feel to create something that now is a collectible? I feel a little guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I feel guilty that they're paying that much money for a set that we don't produce anymore. I'm like, wow, I, I wish you could bring it out again. Wow. But uh, we're on the next thing now. You know, it'd always be collectors. They're rare. They're considered rare, so wow. they go for a lot. Did you have any idea back when you started, or when you yeah, we started working with Dungeons and Dragons building, that it was a blow up like this? No, I, I just thought, you know, we would get a... In the beginning, for like 10, 15 years, I, I had like a thousand customers, maybe 2,000 customers, and I would make just enough to keep myself afloat in New York City. You know, it's an expensive city, and uh, I was still living at home, you know? So uh, I had an art studio in Long Island City, and uh, so I was making enough money to survive, but I wasn't really making money, you know? Mm -hmm. It wasn't until, you know, three, three or four years ago that I started actually making money, like extra money, you know? Wow. Like, wow, now I can actually put something in savings, you know? Well, you know what? You just said something very interesting just to... Um, inspire others to get to the point where I, I'm gonna keep doing this, I'm gonna keep doing this kind of, until I get yeah. to win. Like, what would you say to inspire people to keep... Uh, pursue your mm -hmm. dreams, you know? I mean, um, it, it's... I, I did it because I enjoyed it, you know? I, I enjoyed it. It didn't matter I wasn't making money. I was living the life I wanted to live. You know, I enjoyed it. And I think that that should always come first. I think you should always try to do pursue with passion what you love, what you're passionate about. And I, I really believe that if you do that, you will eventually make money at it, you know? And uh, if you can at least just survive doing it, you're living your dream. You know, you're living your dream. It doesn't matter how much money you make, as long as you continue to do it. You, that's why I think people take advantage of artists a lot of times. Yeah, oh, they would do it anyway. We don't have to pay them that much, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so. That's a double edged sword. Give him a piece of bread and some yeah, water. Yeah, he, he, he's a writer. He's always, always good at writer. He's a musician. He's always good at do that. You know, they, we get taken advantage of. But it is true that we're living the life we want to live. And if you do it, if you do something you enjoy, you go to work at it overtime. You go to dream it day and night. You go to work hard at it. And that's how you become successful. You're doomed for failure if you do something you don't enjoy. You're just a worker bee, you're a drone, you're living a, a trudging life of despair and sadness. Why would you do that? You know, I know some people maybe later in life they get stuck into that, they have a family and this and that. So I say start early. If you're young, 
Start early. Do not get entrapped into that whole thing. I must make money. Your first thought should be, what dream should I pursue? And as you pursue your dream, maybe you meet someone that likes that dream too, or that believes in your dream as well. And, you know, that, that would be a good connection to have, somebody that supports you in your dream and doesn't say, you should not do what you always wanted to do in love. You should go and work over there because they'll pay you X amount of money. That's, that's not a good recipe for a happy life. Mm-hmm. You know, do you embrace um, what's, what's that thing called? Um, 3D printing? Is uh, that a part of your, or you like a hands-on? You like to physically? I, we don't do it, but oh, you know, okay. I, I I know there are people. A lot of my customers that do do it, and right. they they're companies that make stuff that mimic our stuff, or. Okay, let's be nice and enhance our stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna say they copy us, but they, they, you know, you can, they do specialized pieces that work with our scale and our composition. And so someone can uh, print that and then add it to our dungeons and not have to print, you know, 300 pieces, but maybe one or two specialized pieces to go and enhance. Of course, it's not painted, they have to, well, then have to paint it themselves. All of our stuff comes painted if you want to. It also comes unpainted, but there, there are a lot of, there are, I would say, fine, you know, buy some of those other companies stuff and, and add it to ours. Um, when I have fine competition like that, I always tell them, I say, listen, man, if you're going to copy us, at least do it right. Keep it in the right scale. Let's combine them. Let's build this hobby out and maybe instead of fighting each other, let's all grow it so that more people will come into the hobby and game and uh you know there's lots of pieces of this pie for everybody oh that's very mature of you i want to eat the whole pie you're one of those kids <laughs> we, we can play some, in a stand back and have all some of slices it. like having a party <laughs> in your house you know you slice them you know here you have a little pie this that you know <laughs> I, i'm aware that i have a very big piece of the pie so you know but all I, right I, player i need to have all of it <laughs> So we have lots of companies coming on. When I started, I was the only one. Now wow. we have lots of other companies. And so consequently, lots of people are finding out about it. And that brings more people into the hobby, right? The rising tide lifts all the boats. Mm-hmm. And eventually, I know they're going to want the best boat. Wow. Which is nice, right. nice stuff. The yacht. Right. The yacht of our ocean. I want some hand painted rocks. <laughs> yeah, the, they call it like the Rolls Royce of terrain. You know, we're, we're not the lowest. We're, we're the high. We're the Ferraris. You know, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not. I know it's not cheap, but we do. But it's now every set quality. would be, I guess. Um, well, not only a work of art, but original, right? Because you're hand yeah, painting we, them. We sculpt them. We sculpt them by hand. Wow. And uh, so no two are the same. No, well, with sculptures, you make one, and then you make a, a big $10,000 metal mold, and you, okay, so you still you do manufacture them in China, okay. and, and there they have artisans, you know, these are expert painters that sit there and they hand paint every single one. Wow. You know, it's a kind of production line thing, you know? Okay. But it's not a sweatshop, you know. <laughs> How it's, it's like, you know they have air conditioned, like, ladies and gentlemen. They, they, they're okay. Well, we go out there, you know, they're mostly young people, and they go out there and they paint, and, uh, you know, they work hard, you know. I'm not going to say they don't work hard. They work. And, um, but it's a, it's a nice job. It's not like mining coal or doing, you know. Right. It's like art. They sit there and they paint this and then they take the, paint this balcony or paint this lizard man you know <laughs> it's what i used to do for fun you know but, uh, it's so a what's, job. Um, what's next for you oh man what's I, coming out come on tell us the secret give it the scoop coming out in uh probably april okay uh, i can't say it is going to be caverns we're going back to caverns and uh, as you saw in the, that previous photo, we're going to be reinventing the caverns. Okay. It's going to be in Dwarvenite, not resin, the new material that you can bounce off walls. And uh, we have lots of great ideas. I had a sculpting team of eight, eight, nine people in my office this past two weeks working on it. Mm. And they would work, we'd work, I would take them out to drink, and then it would work, work. Mm. No, they didn't drink. Now, now this is in Bushwick? <laughs> I was drinking. But, uh, is this in Bushwick? 
this is it, well it's gonna be like on the internet kickstarter oh no no i mean like where you're working on the um new ideas and stuff where's yes, your we have a uh spot here in bushwick and uh right over my gallery zaltar's gallery of art fantastical art and um so they're working now they've gone back and that but work continues until april and uh that's one Kickstarter. Then you have a miniature Kickstarter. It's just going to be little miniatures. For our first time, we're going to come out with a bunch of miniatures. Not just terrain, but an actual Kickstarter for miniatures. That'll be at the end of the year. And also this year is going to be the Kickstarter for the world of Mithras. My my books of Mithras, my D Dungeons & Dragons world that I worked on since I was 12. Wow. That's coming out, and that's what I'm very excited about. It's going to bind all of these things together. Wow. The, 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 the world is, the terrain we make is for the, my world. The miniatures we make are for my world. So everything will be now one. You'll be able to play in Mithras and you say, oh, I want to make uh, this cavernous passage in the Arendor Mountains. We have a set called the Arendor Mountains. We're going to make, uh, we're going to go to the gold coin in. You can build the gold coin in with our pieces. Oh, we, we ran into this guy at, at the uh, the Roaring Lion Square, and we have that miniature, that guy you can run into, wow. you know? So it, it now we, we're creating a full-dimensional world, not just terrain. So I'm very excited about that. How long do you think it will take to make those? Uh, well, i got to draw a lot of maps. I'm going to draw, be drawing maps and maps, uh, layouts, castles. Right now I'm working on the Castle of Valoria. Castle Crag in my city of Valoria, and I have to draw all the plans. I'm, I'm building it first, and then I'm taking it apart and I'm drawing every floor in three-dimensional drawings. My father was an architect, so I, I learned a lot from him from doing architectural drawings and stuff. So what's that one? Huh? That uh, the drawing there. What? What's that one like? Oh, that that's uh, that looks like Arredondo. Arredondo Island, I drew that map for Tim Cask, who was the first employee at TSR, at Dungeons and & Dragons. And that's his world. Sometimes I, I get commissions to draw other people's worlds. So I love to draw maps. So that's his world of Arredondo Island. A lot of snake riders. That looks like my world. Yes. That is uh, the Valorian Plains and the city of Valoria at the bottom and the Arendor Mountains at the top. And uh, that's good. Maps like that will be part of the, the new books. The, the Game Master's book, the Player's book, and uh, very excited. That's Did you my... have anything to do with the um, Game of Thrones maps? No, no, I did not. You know, the, when, I, when I first saw that yeah. series, first thing I thought about it was, was your work. I was excited. I, yeah. Now, who knows? They might have been aware of my stuff. You know, because I've had my stuff since 96, you know. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, George R.R. R. Martin is a D&D player. Oh, so he okay. he must have been aware of us. I mean, so uh -huh. who knows? Maybe <laughs> maybe they're inspired. That, that makes a yeah. lot of sense. I'm inspired. In fact, he showed, <laughs> he showed the Dwarvenaut in his theater uh, down in, I think it's in New Mexico. He has a movie theater. And he shows films, and he showed the dwarven not there. Although I missed the premiere, I, did, I wasn't able to get down there. Call SBO. So he knows about me. He knows about. I would love to meet him one day. Now, when when you see pictures like this, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Oh my God! I was so young. Look at that. That that's, <laughs> that was like wow. Probably twenty years ago. Wow. What well, can you even? That was so clean even, cut. <laughs> can you even think of what you were thinking at that moment in that picture? Besides, I, obviously you, you I were was working. Working but. on the. Uh, you know that shot. They probably just took a hey hey, stand here and, and I'm gonna take a shot. Photo. So it was a little posed, probably. Okay. And what about <laughs> yeah, right here? This, that was a Gen Con. That's me hamming it up at my booth. And looking like I'm gonna take a bite out of the, the hell's hellscape. Oh, they, this is from um, the Kickstarter video. It's just still from the Kickstarter video where the director's like, "Why don't you get over here and just pop up <laughs> <in front of> the, <laughs> like you're King Kong?" You know, 
Who is that director? How do yeah. we fire him? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, this was Nate, who now is uh, running the office. He what? Came, he was a customer. He was a customer of mine, a fan. And he approached me, he said, I'm a filmmaker. I would love to do a film for your Kickstarter. I'm uh, really good at it, you know? And I was like, okay. We paid him in product. Okay. And, uh, but then he was so good. We're like, we got to keep you, you know? So now, <laughs> now he's actually part of the team and a very important part of the team. He's like a brilliant, brilliant so, guy. So how often do fans end up working with you? A lot. A lot of okay. time we do. I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find out the oh, whole like, staff. Oh, these, these fan letters now. Oh, hey, I want to come work for you. But no, we, I, we, everyone that that works for me plays D and D. Oh go, wow. We play together, and uh, they're all they're not just doing a job; they're doing what they enjoy. Wow. You know? And so we, you know, we'll take a, a break at night and then run games. Um, wow. Take turns. Dungeon mastering, you know, and uh, so that keeps us excited about it, you know. And let's wow. test the things that we're making. Let's test them on ourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so wow, you are living the dream because you not only yeah, found a way to do what you love, but you found a way for other people that love what you do to be able to be a part of that well, machine as well. That's what I, I do love about it is that instead of artwork that just goes on one person's wall, right. you know, what I, what I make gets shared with thousands of people all over the world, and then they take those creations and they get to be creative with them, and then they share that creativity with their friends. So, like, it, it multiplies, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's a very feeling of, of big gratitude for me. You know, I get emails and, and messages from people telling me, thank you. For doing what you do and i i get to play with my kids three four hours of solid time with my family and are not watching a tablet or an iphone or whatnot what's but, that that was that <laughs> it's not technology it's like weird. wow i can touch it and build with it like you know and, and sit around the table together in person not through a screen and tell stories together that's dungeons and dragons such a great game because um, it's a social game, you know, you sit around and, you know, and you tell stories like, like back when we were cavemen around the fire, campfire, telling stories, and it's a long tradition of our species, of our humanity, and it continues, and I think that's why we love it so much. Eight hours can go by like nothing when you play D&D, &D. you know, you just hang out, and you tell stories, and you create, act like this person or that person, you explore each other's inner selves, and you get to explore a different dimension of yourself, and it's a teamwork game. You're not against each other. You don't hate each other. It's not like those games where you're trying to kill each other, eliminate each other. You're working together as a team to complete a quest. So you're thinking about cooperating. It's a wonderful game for young people, you know? It's amazing that it was vilified at one point because it's actually just a great game for kids and for parents and that kind of thing. Well, um... I don't want to walk away from this opportunity yeah. Yeah. and not to ask you a very important question. Yeah. Why are you getting involved with Fanfare? Oh, that's my alma mater. You know, they I went there, it changed my life. I was, you know, a bit of a delinquent before that. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I got kicked out of school uh, and uh, I was going to not go to school again. You know, I was like 15 or so. and. Uh, Art and design took me in. They, I, I took a drawing test. My mother made me go there. She said, "I'm, you're not quitting school. You're going. This school lives up. I, I live down the block from it. I was on 51st Street. Is where I grew up." She said, "You're going to this school, and you're good at drawing. You like to draw. This is a school where you can draw." And I'm like, "Wow, <laughs> really? Okay, I would do that." So I took the test, and they let me in. Like next week, they're like, "Oh, yeah, we'll take." It. I aced it. And uh, that's what, and I met Erwin Greenberg, my painting teacher, who was an incredible guy. I mean, an inspiring teacher who would get there at six in the morning and we would all go into the, uh, what was called the Old Hat Painting Club. And we would go, get special permission to go in early and we would have someone sit up there and we'd paint in oil paints. Always there'd be a different person sitting there 
with their clothes on, you know. <laughs> a different person every day. We would hide, hide. We would go to the cafeteria the day before. We'd be like, oh, you want to pose tomorrow morning? You'll get some money. And then, then we'd put money in a little coffee cup. We'd pass around a cup and give it to the model. Every day we had a different model. And uh, it taught us how to paint really well every day, three hours in the morning. Uh, then they would stay after school as well. And then there was always class, but painting was only like once a week, I think. So we needed more paint. So that was a way to get paint every day. And then sometimes we'd go to the Art Students League. We, we would sneak in to the Art Students League. And we had some, some teachers that would let us in there. <laughs> and uh, it was great. We were so inspired. I think a lot of artists really learned from that environment. That was a time when painting, realistic paintings was not a thing in New York. It was all abstraction. And they would laugh at you if you painted something realistic. So we felt really like underground. Like, we were like ah, yeah, we would paint real things, you know? And this is like the new avant-garde. This is the crazy stuff. <laughs> well, that abstract stuff, that's, that's the stuff everyone's doing. We're doing wow. crazy stuff. We're actually painting realistically. <laughs> You know? Is there a website that people could check out your your work? Oh, well, yeah, my, my website is uh, dwarvenforge.com. Dwarvenforge.com. And, uh, you know, check it out. Check out all the stuff we're doing. Now, could people yeah. visit your museum, too? Uh, I, I your space? don't have a museum. I mean, you're on... Um... <laughs> There's a gallery. See, I'm projecting right. in the future, man. I'm, but that's it, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting you out there, yeah. see? The energy. I think I have to die first. No, 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 no. <laughs> Come on. No, no. no. The gallery. That's we... the old school way of doing it. <laughs> we... Well, okay, that's... Here's the thing. I, I, When I was a struggling artist, I still am, they, uh... They would never accept my work in any galleries in New York. Mm. You know, I kept bringing them around. Slide, no, you're passe. This is Renaissance. You can't. This is not what we do here. Mm. See, this is what we do: blank canvases or splashes of whatever. So, my revenge now was now that I made some money, I I, I couldn't get in a gallery, so I made my own gallery. Mm. So now I I opened my own gallery, and they can't tell me not to hang anything there because it's my gallery. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Go to the website, support, check out. This is just amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you. This was fun. Yeah, and it was a fun. double um, surprise thank for me you. because thank I you. met you once before, and it was good to find out that you were actually going to be a guest today, so I'm super excited. Thank you. And Let's thank spread you. the word. Let's get everybody playing Dungeons & Dragons. That's right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Michael Mazuka. The night. Michael said, Michael, you're watching Eclectica Everything Sci-Fi Fantasy, and that's right, Geek Media. And um, Geeks. this is Eclectica, only on Sev Network, and um, we will see you next time. Thank you so much.